ーみたいな Someone left a handprint behind on the inside of the walker. They must have been hiding in there and put their hand on the wall without thinking. Does this handprint look familiar, Toko? No, it doesn't. Okay then, let's just compare it to your hand, shall we? That'll clear everything up, right? Yeah! Stop wasting my time. Just tell us the truth. It's my handprint. Dang, she just straight up admitted it. Then you killed Sakura! No, I swear, there's no way! Out with it. I probably did kill her. Straight up again? Wait, what do you mean probably? Give us the details, Toko. What happened between you and Sakura? Talk, now. After I read Sakura's note, I decided to go there early, so I went into the rec room. I didn't know what she might do if I didn't go, but I was too scared to face her head on. So I figured I'd just sneak in first and hide in the locker. Then, did you see what happened? Did you see me hit her? Yes, and I saw you write my name. I saw you forge her dying message. Well... That's awkward. So, after he left, I jumped out of the locker and put the magazine back on the shelf. But when you did, you put it back upside down. I didn't mean to. I was in a hurry. Imbeciles, all of you. Forget all that. Why did you attack Sakura? After I put the magazine back, I heard a sound behind me like a, like a monster growling. And when I turned around, there was 
Sakura, covered in blood and staring right at me. When I saw all that blood, I fainted right there in front of the magazines. I don't remember what happened after that. If you want to know more, you'll have to ask her. Ha <laughs> <laughs> Get it back! It was your fault after all! My fault! Master's fault! When our faults combine, they soar to even greater heights! Just answer the question. Did you kill Sakura? Well, to be honest, Miss Morose and me don't actually share our memories. So I can't really say what was going on. But I was just minding my own business, sleeping peacefully when someone shook me away. Was it a prince paying me a visit? I wonder. So I opened my eyes to see... Splatter everywhere! I was not prepared for that. And, well, I guess it took me by surprise. I got so startled, I smacked it with the first thing I could find! Which I guess was a bottle. Sakura was just worried about you, and you... You're terrible! No, she's terrible! Thanks to her, I murdered someone who wasn't an adorable boy for the first time ever! And when it was all over, you collected the pieces of the bottle to get rid of the evidence, didn't you? I wasn't about to die for some woman! If I'm gonna go down, I want it to be for killing Master! Just go away and die your meaningless death alone. Don't drag me into it. But I just can't catch a break, you know? Faith got it out for me. Because normally, Sakura should have been able to dodge my attack, no problem! Even as strong as she is, she must have still been reeling from Hero's attack. Hey, come on! That's... you know... But anyway, I'm not the one that killed Ogre! So that's good! Well then... What's wrong? Come on, everyone, we're ready to vote, right? Let's do this! No, not quite yet. Huh? Not yet? Why not yet? Don't you think there was something odd about Toko's story? I mean, you had to have noticed. Odd? Huh? Hero's attack, and then Toko's, but that still wasn't the end of it. Tell us your story one more time. Tell us what happened after you fainted. Then even this staggle of idiots should understand what I'm talking about. You wish is my command, darling! surprise when you saw Ogre covered in blood. So you smashed her head in with a Monokuma bottle? You got it! I smashed her good! And where did the attack take place? <laughs> right where I woke up! I killed her there in front of the shelf! <laughs> I was just sleeping peacefully! And all of Where did the attack? Right where I was! I killed her there in front of the shell! No, it's wrong! We found Sakura sitting upright in a chair. If the blow by the shelf was the cause of death, there's no explanation why she was in that chair. So, you finally noticed. That's... just another lie from a bloodthirsty serial killer! Are you sure you didn't attack her while she was sitting in the chair? No, I'm sure she's telling the truth. Anyone who saw the murder scene should think the same way. I got it! Sakura was definitely attacked in front of the shelf. The blood stain by the magazines is proof of that. 
Then she must have moved the body after she killed her, right? All to make it look like I did it. Because when I hit her, she was sitting in the chair. Hey, come on now, look at me. I can't carry anything heavier than my own scissors. There's no way I could move a muscle-bound heavyweight like that. Then, then what's the deal? Well, are you still convinced the case has come to an end? But, but... Plus, the biggest mystery of all, the locked room, still has yet to be explained. Until we take care of that, we can't say this case has been properly settled. Oh, that part's easy. After she killed Sakura, Toko just hid in the locker again. Oh, so she just hid in there? Till everyone showed up and opened the door? And while everything was all confused and hectic, she just snuck out of the locker into the group. No, I don't think that's possible. I got it! Even before we opened the door to the rec room, Hina and I both got a look inside. And at that point, the locker was already open. So obviously, Toko couldn't have been hiding in there. Okay, then. Where was she hiding? I don't know. What's this whole locked room thing about anyway? How do you not know? You killed her! I think the fact that I don't know proves I didn't kill her. Thank you very much. You're lying! No, she's not. I've been saying all along, there's still more to this case. But if Genocide Jill didn't do it, that means Ogre didn't die from the shot to the head! And? Well, well, I can't imagine what else could have killed her. That's because you're overlooking vital information. that killed Ogre. If it wasn't from Genocide Jill's attack, then what was it? There's no other possible cause. What killed Sakura? I can't think of anything other than the shot to her head. Shoot! What was it that killed Ogre? If it wasn't from Jill, what was it? There's no other that killed Sakura. I can't think of anything other than... No, it's wrong! According to the Monokuma file, Sakura had vomited blood. I think we can assume there's a chance this was related to her cause of death. In fact, there was even a trace of blood left around her mouth. Well, I mean... Maybe when she got hit with the bottle, she cut the inside of her mouth. If that's all it was, the file wouldn't have specified vomited blood. Not to mention, I didn't find any cuts inside her mouth. You need to check in there? God, you really are into dead bodies! No, I'm not into dead bodies. What I'm into is solving mysteries. But if there wasn't a cut or anything, then what made her vomit blood? Some sort of reaction within her body. Most likely, Sakura was poisoned. Poisoned? That's right. This is the conclusion I've arrived at, and so there can be no mistake. <laughs> You're making me go all weak in the knees! She was poisoned? It isn't possible! Is it really so hard to believe? Then let me explain exactly how the culprit was able to poison her. You can... explain it? Of course, if you don't mind. Everyone, quiet! Shut up and listen to Master! But you're the only one talking. The key to unlocking this mystery was hiding in the chem lab up on the fourth floor. Huh? Not in the rec room? And I could have found it all along! You never would have, since you gave up on the search the moment you were barred from the crime scene. Well, yeah, good point. There's a big shelving unit in the chem lab that houses a variety of mixtures and chemicals. And that's where I found this. Is that... the poison? It's not an especially powerful poison, but it'll still kill you if you drink an entire bottle. But the specific properties don't matter. What does matter is where I found it. Where'd you find it? The shelf is divided up into three sections, A, B, and C. In section A, dietary supplements, in B, reagents, and in C, a variety of lethal chemicals. And that's where the 
poison came from? Section C? Well, that's the question, isn't it? <laughs> I got it! The poison was actually in Section A, wasn't it? <gasps> you just said that Section A was for supplements or whatever. Strange, isn't it? Why would there be a bottle of poison mixed in with all those nutritional additives? Yeah, so? Why? Because the culprit switched it out. That's why. Wh what do you mean? I mean... this. certainly makes me want to spit it out. What's so high quality about this stuff? Huh? What are you talking about? I'm talking about the protein, of course. Protein? Can I see that bottle for a second? Oh, sure. Do whatever you like. This is... it's protein powder. Correct. That wasn't poison in the bottle, but harmless protein powder. Which makes one wonder, the poison that should have been in that bottle, where did it go? into the protein can. If the protein's in the poison bottle, it seems only logical to assume the reverse is true, right? Absolutely. The contents of each container were switched. So the protein was in the bottle of poison, and the poison was in the protein can. Once you accept that, it becomes obvious how the culprit was able to get Sakura to drink the poison. Holy crap! All they had to do was hand her something there at the scene, and she was happy to drink the poison herself. I got it! You're saying they gave her a protein drink, right? A protein drink which actually contained a deadly poison. What? That's all it took to kill Sakura. That is the true cause of death. You no? Know? I do remember Ogre saying that protein stuff was good for all kinds of aches and pains. So maybe she took it to try and help with the whole bleeding head wound thing. But what was offered to her instead was a bottle full of poison. And I already know exactly who swapped the mixtures. For real? Who was it? Evidence revealing who replaced the two materials was left in the chem lab for anyone to see. left behind in front of the shelf. That's the evidence you're talking about, isn't it? 
I visited the chem lab this morning, and there were definitely no footprints there at that point. They must have appeared around the time of the murder, which leaves no doubt that they're connected. What's more, the footprints were in front of Section A, where I found the bottle meant for the poison. The culprit must have gone to Section A to swap the poison and protein, leaving their footprints behind. And given how clear the prints were, figuring out who they belong to will pose no problem. All we have to do is check everyone's footprints right now. Then we'll see who... It was me. The footprints. They're mine. <gasps> Hina? If you're all gonna find out anyway, I'd rather you hear it straight from me, you know? <laughs> Ogre's killer was... Yep. I did it. I killed Sakura. Just as I suspected. The footprints were made by a pair of sneakers. There was no mistaking it. And the only people here who wear sneakers are... A gun! Me and Hina are the only ones. Oh, so Byakuya. That explains why you... If the footprints didn't belong to Makoto, that left only one other possibility. Just Nina. Plus, Nina's been acting strange ever since the trial began. You were in an awful rush to get to the vote, weren't you? This whole time, you've been focused on pinning the crime on someone else, haven't you? I... I can't believe it. What about it can't you believe? Well... It's just, the two of them were so close. That's likely exactly why it turned out this way. Because they were so close, Sakura didn't think twice about it when Hina handed her the concoction. Hina used that trust to kill her. She deceived the victim, and she tried to deceive all of us. I have to say, Hina, coming from you, this was a particularly nasty little scheme. Is it true? Did you really kill Sakura? And if you did, why? Why would you do that? I found her. There in the rec room. She was hurt. She asked me to bring her that protein drink. But when I went to get the powder from the chem lab, it just occurred to me all of a sudden. Now's my chance to kill her. That's what you thought, right? That's when you switched out the protein powder, and that's when you gave her the poisoned mixture. And then... she downed it. All at once. And... and then... Hold it! I'm not convinced. You're not about to claim she wouldn't kill a close friend, are you? You still don't get it, do you? The game we're playing here isn't so kind. Funny words like friendship don't matter here. What matters is outwitting the opponent, defeating them. Not a person alive would sacrifice themselves for another. In the end, we're all in it for ourselves. Just like how this girl sacrificed Sakura to save herself. You say that, but I'm still not convinced. <sighs> how many times do you plan to repeat yourself? Don't misunderstand me. I'm not saying it because of some misguided sentimentalism, but there's still that one unsolved mystery, and I'm not convinced. Are you talking about the locked room problem? Hina, if you really are the killer, explain it. How did you create that locked room? Well... But that doesn't matter! Just because I'm guilty, that means I have to tell you everything? No, it doesn't. But the fact that you won't tell us concerns me. Surely you're not. Do you honestly think Hina didn't actually kill her? And if I do? 
impossible. She switched out the mixtures. She's the culprit. There's no way you can doubt this. Are you sure about that? Even ignoring the fact that I don't want to believe it, it just doesn't fit. What doesn't fit? I mean, why would someone leave such a clear clue like a footprint? It's too obvious, too easy. He's right. It makes it look like you wanted people to suspect you. That, that was... I was just nervous. So I didn't notice I'd left a footprint. You didn't notice? Yeah, that's just how it was. What can I do? Listen, Hina. Could you go into a bit more detail? Tell us more about when you switched the poison and the protein. Uh, how come? That doesn't matter. Hina, please. I'd like to know too. F fine. Waste your time if you like. It's clear that Hina is the culprit. There's nobody else to suspect. Nobody else could have possibly done it. Go ahead, Hina. Start from the moment you arrived at the chem lab. Well, well right away I went to section C and got the poison. And is that when you spilled the powder in front of that part of the shelf? Yeah. When I opened the bottle, I dropped it like an idiot. I see. Okay then, go on. So then I moved to section A and got the protein powder. And that's where I switched them. Once I was done with that, I took the protein can that had the poison in it and left the room. But I accidentally put the bottle filled with protein powder back on the wrong shelf. And because of that, everything I did got found out. And that's it. That story you just told. First you went to Section C to get the poison. Then moved to Section A to get the protein, right? Meaning you went from Section C to Section A. Do I have that correct? Yeah. Can you repeat that series of events one more time? What's wrong with you, Big Mac? You're being awfully pushy. It's the same thing no matter how many times you hear it. How long until you're satisfied? some of the powder on the ground in front of the shelf. Yeah. When I grabbed the bottle, I dropped it. Okay, and then? I moved from section C. No, it's wrong! You said you went to get the poison from section C. And that's where you spilled the powder, right? Yeah. What about it? And after that, you said you moved from Section C to Section A to get the protein. But the footprints left at the scene were not moving from Section C to Section A. That contradicts what you just said. Whoa. Then maybe she moved in some weird direction on purpose to disguise her movements? No, that can't be it. Remember what Hina just said? What the? Hina, what's the meaning of this? Uh, um, well... You lied to us. Plain and simple. If you look at the footprints, your movements in the chem lab are obvious. The powder had already been spilled when you came in, and you went straight to Section A. So you never went to Section C. Whatever you did there, it only involved Section A. Well... What the... what the hell? What's going on here? And the footprints aren't the only problem with her account. 
Before I explain that part, I'd like to submit some new evidence. New evidence? Impossible, there can't be. Are you sure? After all, you're the one that gave it to me. I did? It was hidden inside the bottle of poison you gave me. I'm amazed you, of all people, would miss such a vital clue. A truly grave oversight. Just say it already! What is it you think you found? I found this. It had sunk to the bottom of the bottle. And the hidden clue was exposed, thanks to you ingesting the powder. I couldn't have solved the mystery without you. So, thank you for that. But, but, what is it? Oh, you still don't realize? Well then, Makoto, why don't you explain it? Huh? Me? Uh, if you really do know, explain the meaning of that shard of glass. It's part of the window from the rec room door, right? The window? The window we broke to get in was light blue, just like that. So I think that must be it. You're right, it must be. Of course, that leads to another question. How did a shard of glass from the window get inside this bottle of poison? What's so strange about that? What's strange is that... According to what Hina told us... I got it! The bottle of poison was left on the shelf in the chem lab. That is what you said, right, Hina? Mm. And yet, somehow a piece of glass from the rec room window made its way into the bottle. Everything Nina told us was a lie? In reality, that bottle of poison most definitely found its way to the rec room. It was there at least until the window got broken. In other words, when the locked room was unlocked. There's no other way to explain the presence of that glass in that bottle. And then, once the room was opened, the bottle somehow got moved back to the shelf in the chem lab. Meanwhile, the protein can we found at the crime scene was planted there. That had to be after the locked room was opened. In other words, after Sakura died. Wait, hold on. You're moving too fast. I'll grant you, the bottle of poison may well have been in the rec room when it was locked. But how can you say the protein can was put there after the room was unlocked? We already know she was given the protein can with the poison inside, right? If that can wasn't there when she died, how did she get poisoned? You're right. We do need to explain that. But before we do, there's something I'd like to confirm with everyone here. Huh? It has to do with the protein can. After Sakura's body was discovered, did anyone move it or trip over it or anything like that? What are you talking about? Is this some kind of loaded question? Not at all. Just answer to the best of your ability. Well, no, not that I remember. Yeah, me either. Not me. Same here. Yeah, me either. Okay then, that settles it. That proves that the protein can found its way to the murder scene after the room was opened. Oh, come on! How can you say that? How can you know what I don't know? When it comes to that protein can, there's not a doubt in my mind. Until the locked room was unlocked, it absolutely was not in there. So you're saying... Someone planted it there after we got the door open? No. No, that's impossible! It, it had to have been in there the whole time! It had to be! It was in there before the rec room was unlocked!
When it comes to that protein camp, there's not a doubt until the locked room was it absolutely was not So you're someone fled? No. No, that's impossible. It, it had to have been in there the whole time. It had to be. It was in there before the red room was unlocked. Shoot! When it comes to that protein can, there's not a doubt in my mind. Until the locked room was unlocked, it absolutely... So you're someone planned? No. It, it had to have been in... It had to be. It was in there before the rec room was unlocked. When it comes to that protein pan, there's not a doubt in my mind. Until the locked room was unlocked, it absolutely was not in there. So you're saying... Someone planted it there? No. No, that... It, it had to have been in there the whole time! It had to be. It was in there before the rec room was unlocked. When it comes to that protein pan, there's not a doubt in my mind. Until the locked room was unlocked, it absolutely... So you're... Someone planted... No. It, it had to have been in- It had to be. It was in there before the rec room was unlocked. When it comes to that, there's not a doubt until though it absolutely- So you're someone planned? No. It, it had to have been in- It had to be. It was in there before the rec room was unlocked. Shoot! When it comes- Comes to that, there's not a doubt until though it absolutely. So you're someone planned? No, no, that's impossible. It, it had to have been in there the whole time. It had to be. It was in there for. No, it's wrong. You remember how there was broken glass scattered all around the room, right? Of course. It came from the window you broke to get in. What about it? Well, those pieces weren't just scattered around the protein can. We also found pieces underneath the can. What? And this proves it. It shows that the can must have been put down on the floor after the window was broken. So it had to be after we got into the room. I... I see. So that's your explanation. Kyoko, earlier when you asked if anyone had moved the can or tripped over it... If that were the case, that would explain the can being on top of the glass. So you asked everyone about it to eliminate that possibility right out of the gate. And that's made everything clear, hasn't it? As long as it was a locked room, it only contained the bottle of poison and not the protein can. But once the room was opened up, they were switched, and as a result, the protein can wound up in the rec room, and the bottle of poison returned to the chem lab. If that's all true, then why did Sakura drink the poison? I thought we all agreed she was tricked into drinking it because of the protein can. No, that's not why. The only explanation is she drank it from its original bottle, knowing exactly what it was. Precisely. She was alone in a locked room. All she had was the poison. What other possibility is there? You're saying she drank it knowing what it was? Such a ridiculous fiction is... Exactly what happened. Then tell us already. Er, uh, sorry. Please, tell us. Before we get to that, we need to clarify one other thing. We need to establish who exactly got the poison from the chem lab and took it to the rec room. It was Hina, right? She took it and gave it to Ogre. What do you think, Makoto? I got it! I think it was Sakura herself. Huh? So Sakura, who was apparently murdered, just poisoned herself? What are you talking about? There's no way! On the contrary, we know for a fact she went to the chem lab, right to the section full of poisons. You're lying! Stop lying! Why? Why would you lie like that?
You're a liar! What are you saying? Wrong! You're wrong! I'm telling you, I did it! Stop talking! You're a liar! Wrong! You're wrong! Wrong! You're wrong! I hate you! You're a liar! What are you saying? Wrong! You're wrong! I'm telling you, I did it! Stop talking! You're a liar! Wrong! You're wrong! Do you have any kind of proof Sakura took the poison? This should prove it! Hina, did you know that Sakura's foot had a certain yellow powder stuck to it? It did. The same yellow powder that had been spilled by the shelf in the chem lab. That powder was yellow, wasn't it? So the powder we found on Sakura. What else could it be but the powder from the chem lab? Wait, wait, wait. So what was that powder doing on Ogre's foot? And it was only on her instep, right? Sakura must have been standing right there where the powder was spilled. So the person who spilled the powder by the shelf wasn't Hina, but Sakura. Uh. And when Sakura dropped the bottle, she dropped it away from where she was actually standing, which is how she was able to avoid getting it all over herself. But the powder still got scattered around, and some of it must have wound up on her instep. Is there any problem with my thinking? But why did Sakura pay a visit to Section C in the first place? The only explanation is that she was looking for poison. After all, that's all that section contained. No! It was me! I... the poison! Because... because... because I killed her! No, you didn't kill her. The one who killed Sakura was Sakura herself. <clears throat> what? The killer was Sakura? Wait, so you're saying it was suicide? I don't believe it. I don't believe it any more than I believe I can fly. I can't believe it either. Or rather, I don't want to believe it. But when you really think about it, everything matches up. Sakura went and got the poison. She barricaded herself in a room, and she drank it, all so she could end her own life. And that explains why we couldn't solve the mystery of the locked room. I got it! The locked room mystery was created by Sakura. I'm sure she locked herself in so nobody could stop her from doing what she did. She sat there, drank the poison, and breathed her last breath. And the empty bottle of poison rolled around the locked room until we came and opened it. At that point, someone grabbed the bottle and snuck it out of the room. And that was you, wasn't it, Hina? You did it to throw off the investigation, didn't you? When we found her body, you stayed right there near the door because you already knew Sakura was dead. And because the bottle of poison had rolled near the doorway. That's where you picked up the bottle, right? I was too shocked to notice anything. And Kyoko was busy checking the body. And the more I think about it, the more I realize how unusual your actions were. You said you were going to go get everyone else. But your real intention was to go to the chem lab and switch out the containers, wasn't it? Once you were at the chem lab, you headed straight to the section where the protein powder was kept. There, 
You took the powder and poured it into the bottle of poison you grabbed from the rec room. When you left the lab, all you had was the empty protein can. Thinking about it like that, the footprints make perfect sense. When you were done, you gathered everyone together. And once you were back in the rec room, While everyone else was focused on Sakura, you quietly placed the can on the ground. Honestly, I should have noticed. You should have been the first one to run up to Sakura's lifeless body. The Hina I know never would have left her side in a situation like that. So, Sakura committed suicide. In order to hide this fact, Hina undertook a series of actions to undermine the investigation. As long as you could disguise the truth, you didn't care if we blamed you for her death. That's why you didn't bother to get rid of such obvious evidence, right? The footprints in the powder and the bottle of poison? Vital pieces of evidence, and yet... So you're saying Hina consciously deceived us to make it look like she killed Sakura? It's enough, Hina. It's over. It's not! Nothing's over! It is! Actually, no. You're right. We have to end this properly. What happened? This case began when Sakura asked a number of people to meet her in the rec room. Specifically, those people were Hiro, Toko, and Yakuya. But one of them headed out a bit earlier than the others. Toko. She got there one step ahead of everyone else and looked around for a good hiding spot. headed out a bit earlier than the others. Toka, she got there one step ahead of everyone else and looked around for a good hiding spot. And she found it. She crawled into the locker to get out of sight. Then, from inside the locker, she saw Sakura enter the room. Next to arrive was Hiro. When he got there, he mistakenly thought Sakura was going to try to kill him, so he panicked. With 
Without thinking, he grabbed a nearby Monokuma bar and attacked Sakura with it. Thinking he'd killed her, he hastily began covering up his crime. He took a magazine from the table and forged a dying message from Sakura. To that end, he wrote down a name. Toko. By writing her name, he was hoping to pin the murder on her. But of course, Toko had witnessed the whole thing. So as soon as the coast was clear, she jumped out of the locker and hid the magazine on the shelf with all the others. But in her rush, she made one little mistake. She put the magazine back upside down. Soon after, she watched as Sakura slowly opened her eyes. She also saw the blood dripping off Sakura's head and fainted. This caused her personality to switch back over to Genocide Jack. When she woke back up, her second personality also saw the blood-soaked Sakura, and she freaked out. And just like Hiro, she grabbed another Monokuma bottle and attacked her. This explains why there were two wounds on Sakura's head. Assuming Sakura really was dead this time, she set about disposing of the evidence. She gathered up the broken Monokuma bottle shards and the queen chess piece. And that explains how Sakura was attacked twice with the same type of weapon. But even after those two blows, she was still alive. So then, what was Sakura's actual cause of death? It was the poison that Sakura herself got from the chem lab. She turned the rec room into a true locked room scenario, and then drank the deadly mixture. And there, she took her final breath. Later on, the rest of us discovered that her body was in there. We had to smash the door's window to get inside. But someone already knew what had happened. Knew that she had committed suicide. And that same someone quietly snatched the bottle of poison from off the ground. And while nobody was looking, replaced it with an empty protein can. They did all this specifically to place all the suspicion on themselves in an attempt to guide the trial to a false conclusion. And the one who went to all that effort was you, Hina. That's the full truth of the case. <laughs> Sakura took her own life, and you claim to be the killer to hide that fact. Isn't that right? That's what happened? But, Makoto, how did you... How did you manage to... How were you able to uncover the truth that even I couldn't discern? Huh? Oh, well... I mean, you still haven't realized? We don't all act according to calculations and cost-benefit diagrams. That's what makes us so complicated. That's what you don't understand. And that's why you couldn't solve this case. <laughs> See, didn't I tell you? When you dismiss other people's feelings, it'll always come back to bite you in the end. Thank <laughs> you.